Hi, I'm in Wetzlar, Germany today with our friends Steph and Daniels, who you've met in our earlier introduction, and I'm very excited to be in the Leica store at the Leica headquarters. And we're going to be talking today about what everybody knows Leica for, the Leica M line. This is a camera line that has its heritage of being over 100 years old. Now, that, the first M camera wasn't 100 years ago, but the conceptual beginning of the M started 103 years ago, to be exact, 1914, I believe. 1914, Oskar Barnack uh, invented what we call today the Urleica. So while I'm here in Leica, I've had the opportunity to play with this most beautiful camera, which just might end up in my luggage on the way home. <laughs> and this is the M10 with the point nine five Nakalux. You get that right? Absolutely and right. And this is a camera that truly you need to hold and, and feel to, to believe. And it's, it's an incredible camera that just, it, it evokes something in you. And you would know that if you picked it up. And for those of you that have owned a Leica, you know what I'm talking about. A Leica is not just about the camera. It's about the emotion, it's a tool and it just makes you want to take pictures. And what we're going to discuss uh, here, and I'm going to ask Stefan to, to give a little bit of history, is basically the M-Line, and specifically the M-Line since it's gone digital. And uh, we are now at the Leica M10, which we're going to come back and talk about in a minute, but the uh, Leica digital line itself started with the M8. That's correct, yes. In what year? In 2006. 2006. 2006. Yeah. And it's come a long way in these last uh, years. So give us a little history of the decision point, uh, the Leica, you, you had told me that, you know, Leica line almost, or the M line almost stopped once or twice. Um, there's some history there, and I think some of our readers would like to know a little bit about what happened specifically the Canadian connection and, you know, how it has evolved so that we're here today. Yeah. Uh, looking back, that is a really amazing story because um, in the mid-70s SLR cameras were very popular and they almost ruled the market completely and uh, rangefinder cameras uh, were not so popular uh, in, in that period um, so the decision was taken uh, at the lights company to stop the production of M cameras but we had a factory in Canada, Midland, Ontario, who was doing uh, all the lenses for uh, the M system. And thanks to the director of that, uh, that production facility, um, we were able to maintain the M uh, system through that more or less difficult period. Because he said, if you stop the production of the camera, I need to stop production of all the lenses. Uh, so please send over all the tooling, all the equipment, and I will continue the camera too. Um, and that helped uh, the M to survive uh, until the M6 came up in 84 with a built-in uh, electronic light meter, which then changed again uh, the life of the, uh, of the M system completely. Now the M6 camera I had um, in my career early on, uh, eventually moving over to uh, this beauty, which is uh, the M7. And, you know, this is, and one reason why I want to show this is because it is the classic look. You know, it's the, the chrome, it's the lens, the rangefinder, and, you know, the whole feel of the top of the camera, and specifically, you know, the thickness and the way it fits in your hand. Um, so when you decided to move from the M7 to the M8, which was a big, big step, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, the, the digital age was here. Uh, the analog age, everybody knew was going away. Leica made a decision to go digital. Yeah, so um, there was no other way than making the M digital. Uh, because on the one hand, this was uh, what customers were asking for, because they all had and have all these beautiful lenses they want to use in a digital application. On the end, other hand, for us as a company, it was kind of a no-brainer to uh, sell a digital M into that installed customer base. Um, so the obstacles we had to face uh, in the very beginning was to find a sensor matching uh, the special properties of the M lenses. 
Uh, and we found that sensor with Kodak in Rochester, who made a specifically designed sensor in order to give a good image quality uh, with the existing M lenses. Now that was a CCD sensor? That was a CCD sensor, 10 megapixel, uh, still today giving nice results. Now that was you know, a little rocky start for Leica when the M8 came out. And uh, it's amazing that you were able to get over some of the hurdles. A lot of it was if those people that remember those days was with infrared cutoff and some of the sensitivity of the, the, the chip and so forth. And um, uh, I, I imagine everybody scrambled really hard to you know, overcome that. And of course, it's almost forgotten these days, and it, and it should be. But we, you know, that was a tough part. Sensors are so infrared sensitive. And one of the things that you've said about the new sensor as we move into it, though, is it's, you know, you've got one piece of glass on it, and essentially yeah. the only glass on it is the IR cutoff, correct? The, the point is that um, with the M lenses, uh, which in, in, at the beginning were not designed for digital, every piece of glass you put uh, in between the pixel and, and the lens is an additional uh, refraction you don't want. So the goal was to make that uh, glass layer as thin as possible. Yeah? In the M8, we, we stretched it a bit too far. <laughs> it was a bit too thin. But then from the M9 on, uh, we became uh, uh, much better. But having a, a full compatibility between the lenses and uh, the new uh, digital camera. So I think the, the, the key here is the fact that we will keep coming back to the digital lenses. Well, it's not so much the digital lenses, but the M lenses. Uh, I think it's very important to understand that the lenses are, are an important segment. We're going to cover that in a different video, so we're not going to go in depth here. But any M lens can be used on any M camera, and even the, the newest digital cameras. So uh, lenses that are 20 year old can be used that way, and they can be used on some of the other Leica products that we'll be covering also through adapters. So you went from the, the M8 to the uh, M9. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about the M9, because that was a camera you did a lot of things with um, and you know, made some big steps. Yeah. Uh, to get yeah. to where we are today. So with first of all, the M8, here we have an M8.2, but the M8 was not full frame. Uh, it was uh, with uh, a crop factor of 1.33, uh, so a little bit bigger than APS. Uh, with the M9, we went full frame. This was the number one wish of the customers so that they find the, the, the angle uh, of, their, of their analog uh, lenses back again. And the M9 was presented September 9, 2009 uh, in New York City. And I still remember when it was launched uh, uh, because later on that day, I walked the street uh, of, of New York City and uh, two people uh, stand, stand at the uh, at the red light, yeah. And said, so, "Oh, is this the new M9?" Yeah, and I felt so so <laughs> so proud. So the M9, in fact, made the breakthrough for Leica also in the digital era. Now the the M9, there's been iterations from the uh, M9 into um, a, a, a monochromatic camera. So why did you decide to put that? Uh, and a camera, by the way, is very, very, very popular. Um, I know a lot of our readers have that camera, mm -hmm. and the images coming off it are beautiful. So tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, that was kind of a crazy move uh, to build a digital camera, which only can shoot black and white files. Uh, but there is a reason that uh, you, you do that, because um, on a color uh, digital camera, you have that so-called buyer pattern, uh, so that um, a red, a blue, and a green filter uh, in order that the camera can see color. If you move those filters away, uh, the camera becomes more sensitive and the interpolation of these colors doesn't need to be done, which resi results in the camera being um, having a high resolution. It's about the double of a color camera and uh, also you gain between one and a half and two S-stops uh, in sensitivity. And by the way, the camera produces gray, gray tones, gray scale, uh, in, like you never have seen before. So uh, it is a, is a real reason behind that. So this kind of segues into something that uh, I noticed uh, a few days ago when I got here. And uh, prior to that, when I had a 
been shooting with the um, M series is that I was commenting to Chris as we were walking around uh, Wetzler taking pictures, said, there's an incredible look. There's, a, there's something about looking at these files which I can't quite put my hands around, but my eyes are around it. And you, you work very, very hard to make a look. It's buttery, it's sharp, it's smooth. They're, the transitions are really incredible. And I know this can be argued to the cows come home because of the way a lot of uh, people you know, look at this digital science, but we hear it all the time. A camera has a certain look. Leica has a certain look. Talk a little bit about how you've managed to achieve, yeah. and you know, you're, you're thinking on this. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not coincidence or something which just happened. Uh, um, it starts with the lens design. Yeah. You will hear later from Peter Carver much more about that in detail. But to have a lens design which puts uh, the least obstacle uh, for the light. It continues with the sensor design. As we just said, uh, have a very thin layer of glass and not only not having multiple layers of glass in front of the pixel. Uh, that is another part of the special look. And last but not least, the image um, workflow, the image treatment inside the camera, uh, how to work on colors, how to work on contrast, etc. Um, all will result in uh, the special look of, of Leica pictures. And, and it does have a special look, and it's, it's quite, quite interesting. Now, we, we've come from the, the, uh, the monochrome camera and the M9, and a decision somewhere along the line was we need another camera. And you have a life cycle in digital, unlike the good old days where you could get 13 years out of a, a life cycle of a or camera. Even, even 18, 18. Uh, in terms of the M6. And so yeah. now we're into a, a different challenge. We've got to uh, consider how do we keep up with the technology that's coming. So talk a little bit about what happened from the M9 era and what came to what can be considered today. Uh, probably, the, the I like to think of it now as like, you know, the most refined and, and you're there, M series camera. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that were kind of like kludgy aren't there anymore. So talk a little bit about how you went this direction and what the major yeah, uh, maybe features I, were. I have, to, I have to start with the successor of the M9, okay. which is not the M10, it's the Leica M type 240. 240. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a decision once in a while to, to, to stop with the numbers, yeah? but uh, it got a bit confused uh, by everybody, so we restarted numbering the cameras. Uh, but this is the M, Leica M type 240, and at that time, uh, with the CMOS technology, uh, it gave us the possibility of live view, of video, of using Leica R lenses on, on that camera. So this camera uh, was the only full frame camera uh, in our lineup uh, at that time. And so the, the goal was to approach a, a little bit broader target audience. With the appearance of the Leica SL, uh, our mirrorless professional full-frame uh, system camera with the autofocus. Um, the M10, which is the successor of the M Type 240, could go back to its essentials, to its roots. And uh, we get a lot of applause from, from customers for, for making that move. For example, we skipped the video function, which still was available in the, in the M Type 240. Uh, so the camera, um, has less features, but the overall concept is refined, slimmed down, the camera is smaller, the camera is slimmer, uh, and you have direct access to all the controls, um, which is much appreciated. Well, you, you made some other conscious decisions also. For example, you know, the ISO ring, which wasn't, uh, um, ISO dial, which wasn't here before, uh, you know, you kind of place it almost the same way where the, the rewind lever was on the previous camera, so you know, that was kind of like a, a, a step back to the retro, but you made it thinner. Yeah. It's, uh, how, how thin, uh, four? 4.3 we, we, uh, millimeters. 4.3 millimeters, so it's the original so, thickness. That, that doesn't sound a lot, but actually uh, you, it's, it gives the co uh, a whole camera a totally different feel. The goal was that if the camera sits in front of you on the, uh, on the table, that you can con control everything which is essential for shooting a picture. The aperture, 
the distance, the focusing, the ISO, and the shutter speed. No, you don't need more uh, and, and no less. And you can control everything of these settings, even when the camera is switched off. The other, the other thing, too, is you've minimized the number of buttons. If we look at uh, the number of buttons, you've got even have, uh, you know, yeah. five there. Yeah, so even six here. Yeah. You know, now it's just so much easier to you know, work with. Um, and I think this is one of the things that uh, your engineers have done a marvelous job with, is the, the access, the buttons, and the simplicity uh, of operating the camera so that you can actually operate the camera and, and take pictures with it. The overall motivation is photography should be fun, should, should, be, should be a pleasure uh, to work. And our goal is to make a tool which enhances that, that feeling uh, and not um, um, putting obstacles in, in your way um, during, during shooting a picture. So you should concentrate on the subject in front of you and not on the camera. Obviously, Leica has engineers that are photographers because when they've designed this camera, they've designed it <laughs> as a photographer would want to see it. But shooting with a Leica and uh, taking photographs with this is so much more. For me, it's, it's fun. It brings back something that I feel here and I see here, and I can put those two together. And I think what you've done a marvelous job of with all the Leicas, and specifically a lot of the ones that we're going to be visiting, is the fact that you haven't forgotten the real one thing, and that's the passion that's inside all of us about the photography. You haven't complicated the issue, you've simplified the process. And my hat's off to you for that, because I haven't had more fun over the last few days shooting with the SL and this, this M. So it's just been a, a real pleasure. Um, the future, what can you say? You're going to move forward, obviously. Yeah, um, of course we'll, we'll move forward and we, we will continue the M, of course. Uh, but also with, with the M10, which is close to perfection, um, uh, to, to, to move a step further and so on, uh, is a little bit more difficult because we have we've gone uh, quite, a, quite a way already. Right. Um, but the M is not only on our, our only pillar we rely on. On the other hand, there is the Leica SL, yeah? the professional um, uh, full-frame mirrorless camera with a great viewfinder, uh, fast autofocus, and so on. So that's the other, other pillar Leica is standing on. And we're we're going to do a lot on the SL because it really, truly is a pretty amazing camera to work with. Uh, once again, it's one of those cameras you have to look through to really appreciate. And uh, you know, it's encompassing a lot of the modern technology. We could probably talk a lot longer about the M series. Um, it's an amazing camera. We are going to talk uh, about M lenses, so we haven't forgotten that segment as well as a, a number of other things. But Stefan, I want to thank you for the opportunity, not only that you uh, spent the day Saturday with us and actually shooting with you on Saturday. Uh, it was but great fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I, and you know, remember, quote unquote, fun. I think that's what this is all about here. And one of the things that I've noticed about everybody that I've met here at Leica is that it's all about the fun. They're great guys, they've got a great passion, they have a lot of love for what they're doing, but more than anything else, they have a lot of respect and a deep appreciation for the customer. And because they listen to the customer and they put a product out there that as a customer, they just love using. So once again, thanks. Um, I hope to visit with you more throughout the, the week. On behalf of uh, Luminous Landscape, Stefan, thanks very much. Thank you. It was my real pleasure. And we'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.